I believe that it was something that had to be done and right or really wrong or horrible or not, it was our duty to perform these acts because he felt they had to be accomplished. 30 years ago, Leslie Van Houten played a starring role in the deaths of Leno and Rosemary LaBianca. Tomorrow, she'll be in front of a parole board for the 14th time. Welcome back to Court TV, everyone. I'm Nancy Grace. Leslie Van Houten was a devoted follower of Charles Manson, but unlike Manson, Van Houten has been a model prisoner since her conviction. She's earned her bachelor's and master's degree while in prison. Tomorrow, we'll find out if that's enough to earn parole or if the brutal nature of those murders will influence the board to keep Van Houten behind bars. Here's Tim Sullivan with a Court TV special look at Leslie Van Houten. Tex handed me a knife and he said, do something. And I stabbed Mrs. LaBianca in the lower torso. I think 16 times. Leslie Van Houten was 19 years old when she took part in the infamous Manson family murders in Los Angeles. Since then, she's had nearly 30 years to reflect on the life she threw away. I look back and I can see Mr. K's right. You know, I was having life handed me on a silver platter. I had people that loved me. And um, I had a lot more going for me than a lot of kids do. Van Houten grew up in Arcadia, California, where she was the local high school's homecoming queen. She's had other good opportunities uh, in her life, and she's turned away from them and turned towards, towards evil. The evil that attracted Van Houten and some two dozen other young people was Charles Manson. Everyone says that I was the leader of those people, but I was actually a follower of the children because, like, I never grew up. A charismatic ex-convict, Manson convinced his drugged-up followers that he was God or Satan. Today, of course, Van Houten knows better. He's just a creep. In prison, Van Houten has gone through Alcoholics and Narcotics Anonymous, and she has struggled with an eating disorder. But she also gets good reviews for her work as a prison clerk. I believe I live my remorse. I take very seriously what I did, and I have worked very hard to ensure that the behaviors that led to the crime are no longer in existence. Leslie Van Houten, again, everyone, faces her 14th trial. Van Houten seeks is for her role in the notorious Manson family murders of 1969. Van Houten was 19 years old when she and other followers of ex-convict Charles Manson went on a killing spree in the suburbs of Los Angeles. I cut people and I shoot them and I, I do whatever I have to do to survive in the world I live in. When the violence ended, seven people had been butchered. Van Houten was convicted of murder for the deaths of Rosemary and Lino LaBianca. She was convicted of conspiracy in the killing of actress Sharon Tate. Mrs. LaBianca was stabbed 42 times. Anywhere from 16 to 20 of those wounds were inflicted by uh, Miss Van Houten. Van Houten has been in prison for nearly 29 years. By all accounts, she's been a model inmate. While in prison, she's gone through Alcoholics Anonymous and earned a college degree. I think the best way I can show remorse is to be the best person I can today and not say that for special people or, um, you know, it's the only way you can atone for something that's happened. The Manson family murders have generated sensational media coverage for three decades. Perhaps that continuing fascination with Charles Manson is one reason that Leslie Van Houten's perennial bids for parole have always been denied. I'm very sorry that people still continue to give him attention that his only danger is in the attention he's given. If he were ignored and left alone, he would um, probably just fade away. It's unlikely that Manson will ever be forgotten, but Van Houten has not given up. At her last parole hearing in 1998, she was told to try again in just one year. She seemed to take that as a sign of hope. It's going to be a one-year denial. One year? Uh, one year. Uh, the panel finds what I'd like you to do for the next one year is to remain disciplinary free. Thank you. Uh, to continue to upgrade uh, in, uh, in any vocation or education that you can possibly get into. 
I remember, uh, as clear as a bell, bringing that hearing to you guys live last year in 1998. Now, one year later, Leslie Van Houten back before the same California Parole Board. Let's take a brief look back at that 98 hearing. Uh, here, Parole Commissioner Manuel Ortega questions Leslie Van Houten. All right. Thank you. The purpose of today's hearing is to again consider your suitability for parole. In arriving at a decision, we're going to consider the commitment offense, your prior criminality, and your social history, as well as your behavior since your commitment. Now, we have reviewed your central file and the prior transcripts, and we'll first give you an opportunity to make any corrections or clarifications to the record. Then what we're going to do, uh, Ms. Van Houten, uh, I'm going to take incorporate by reference from the decision of the hearing that was held two years ago. That was on... All right. Thank you. The purpose of today's hearing is to again consider your suitability for parole. In arriving at a decision, we're going to consider the commitment offense, your prior criminality, and your social history, as well as your behavior since your commitment. Now, we have reviewed your central file and the prior transcripts, and we'll first give you an opportunity to make any corrections or clarifications to the record. Then what we're going to do, uh, Ms. Van Houten, uh, I'm going to take incorporate by reference from the decision of the hearing that was held two years ago. That was on 4 30 1996 That was pages 1 through 5. Uh, simply what that means is we're not going to read into the record the offense. I know that you went through that the last time with Mr. Giaquinto. But yes, you should have... a statement of facts? Yeah, well, it, it's a decision summary itself. Uh, there is a short statement of facts in there as to why you were in prison. And if you look in your packet, you received a packet, I'm sure, very similar to ours. No, uh, I, I didn't. All right, in your C file, did you get a chance to see... Uh, well, you got a transcript of your last hearing, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay, the last five pages oh, of that sure. are the decision. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about in the beginning. No. Are you going to inquire as to whether she received the packet? I will. Oh, okay. Then we're going to go directly to your progress since the last hearing, the new psychiatric reports, and the information which has a bearing on parole suitability. Now, any changes in your parole plan should also be brought to our attention at that time. Then before we recess for deliberation, district, district attorney and you will be given an opportunity to make a short statement regarding parole suitability and length of confinement. Now, the law and the Board of Prison Terms rules state that you are to be denied a parole date if you're released pose an unreasonable risk of danger uh, to others. At this time, let me review with you very briefly your rights. You have a right to a timely notice of this hearing, availability for review of your C file, and a right to present any relevant documents. Did you receive all of those rights, Ms. Van Hout? Yes. Did you get a chance to look at your C file? Yes, I did. Did you receive a packet very similar to what we have here? A uh, thick packet that contained all of the reports? No. And a, okay, I gave you a list of those reports here. Uh, I noticed at the last hearing when you had uh, two years ago, Mr. Giaquinto asked the same question, and your response was the same, that you didn't receive that full packet but you did get an opportunity to look at all those reports because all of that material is contained in your C file. You got a chance to look at your psych report, I'm sure. Did you read that that was written by Dr. McDaniel? Yes, I did. Okay, how about your board report? Yes. Okay, so you've seen all of that material. Yes, sir. Is there anything on there that you're not aware of? No. Okay, thank you. Let me take that and we'll pass that on to the deputy district attorney. I've seen everything. All right, thank you. One of the rights that you didn't get to exercise prior to today, that was a right to an impartial panel. Do you have any objection to any member of the panel seated before you today? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, before we go on, just I wanted to be sure, uh, the last hearing that you had, you did not, you were not represented by an attorney either. Is that no. correct? Yes. And I know, again, uh, referring to Mr. Giaquinto's questions at that particular time, he asked you about it and you just felt that you could represent yourself better than, or at least as equally as well as you could with an attorney. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And you still don't see a need for an attorney? 